All right, hi everyone, welcome back. I just wanted to let you know that Modular Workspaces version 1.9.2 is now available for Blender 4.5. If you don't know what Modular Workspaces is, it's our add-on for simplifying the process of importing and unpacking collection assets in Blender. It does more than that. It can also add pie menus to help you split the interface from the 3D view into different regions so you can quick access your favorite editors. It can also also apply your favorite settings to things like the asset browser. So like the thumbnails will be the right size. They will automatically open on your favorite asset library, stuff like that. It's one of my favorite tools we've ever made. And my friend Gigso has been helping massively with adding the features, keeping things up to date, etc. There are a few things to keep in mind with this version. First of all, Blender 4.5 has made some significant changes to the way that content is imported from the asset browser by default. To explain this, I'm going to need to show you inside of Blender. Now, Modular Workspaces comes in the form of a couple of files. There'll be an add-on zip file and an asset library zip file. For this version, there's 1.9.2, like I said, for Blender 4.5, but there's no 1.9.2 asset library. Just download the asset library file that is the most recent one on the download list. It should work perfectly fine with the corresponding most recent version of the add-on. The add-on zip file you install like a regular add-on by going to Edit, Preferences. You can do it under Get Extensions or Add-ons. Just press the drop down and choose install from disk. However, the asset library you install differently. You extract the folder contained inside of that zip file somewhere on your computer, and then you go to file paths. Under asset libraries, press the plus button and then direct Blender to that folder you extracted. You do not go to add-ons or extensions and then try and install the asset library zip file. Asset libraries are a unique type of content in Blender. Anyway, there have been some differences with this version compared to previous versions. In Blender's asset browser, if I open up my Afterglow asset library, you'll notice this drop down here. It might be quite small on the screen. Maybe I'll zoom into it. It says import settings. This has changed over time. By default, the import settings are set to follow preferences, but the default for that should be append, I believe. And what that does is if I clear this file, if I drag in a collection asset like Studio Cage 4, by default, everything will be unpacked for you which is great, but it does kind of conflict with the functionality we built for the add-on. You can use stuff straight away. This wasn't always the case in regards to the default functionality for the asset browser, but you'll notice that if you've previously used our add-on, there are no settings for unpacking this content because it's already unpacked for you. Now you see, because this wasn't the case for previous versions of Blender, what happened was people would drag in the content and go, oh, when I'm pressing the modular workspaces features, nothing is happening. That's because there's really nothing for us to do at that point. But that also meant that you missed out on auto organizing the content of the collection asset, centering it on world zero, trimming the suffixes, having control over the parent and the hierarchy settings. So if you want to make use of the modular workspaces unpack features, there are two ways you can do that. Number one is to set the import settings to link. What that will do is when you drag in any collection asset, it will come in the form of an instance version of the collection asset. And that gives modular workspaces the opportunity to do its own unpacking system. In this way, I can say maybe selected only, have our collection asset selected. I want it to center on unpack. So it will be centered on the world zero. I want it to organize the content into its own collections. I want to trim the suffixes and make sure the content is local. So it's not linked to an external file and then press unpack. And that's automatically done for you. The cameras are in the cameras collection. It's local so we can edit it. It was centered on the world zero, etc. So link is the method to use under the import settings. If you want our functionality to assist your workflow. Again, you don't have to do that. It's perfectly fine if you don't. The rest of Modular Workspaces functions, including things like our custom splitting for the editor and our custom pie menu to help you split the editor even further, that's all available to you even if you don't use the unpacking features. But there is another way. Not only does this work with the link method, but if you do have it on append or follow preferences, assuming that follow preferences default method is append, you can also tick the instance collections when appending checkbox. Now, if I clear the file again, you'll notice that if I drag in a collection asset this time, even though it's technically on append, because like I said, follow preferences by default should be append now, it is still an instanced collection, which means that we have control over unpacking it. So to clarify, this is a difference in behavior from prior to Blender 4.5 and now on Blender 4.5. This is quite a significant shift compared to previous versions of Blender. So the advice I would give for previous modular workspaces customers is if you're using anything below 4.5, 
stick with 1.9.0 and below. But if you've now moved to Blender 4.5, please use version 1.9.2 and whatever comes afterwards. And keep in mind that the import functionality has changed, and that is why the settings appear and disappear depending on what you have selected. If you are new to modular workspaces, I may explain a few more features right now before my time runs out for this video. So you notice I've been opening and closing the asset browser with a pie menu. By default, the shortcut for this is Alt and Space, but you can change this. Under the Toggles subsection of the interface panel, you will see a Toggle Shortcuts sub panel and under here there's pie menu shortcut you can set this to whatever you like in previous versions i've had it set on one of my mouse buttons but alt and space is also fine if you don't like pie menus then we have buttons up here in the 3d view and you can set those here with the left top right and bottom area buttons you can also choose to have them not show the text and only show an icon you can change them to any asset browser you like and similarly you see this number here this number one you can have different sets of your favorite editors. So there's effectively like two hot swaps you can swap between, and you can also set those in these area sections here. There is also a hotkey to swap between those. So if I press Shift, Alt, and X while hovering over the 3D view, you'll see that it swaps between our two different options. So modular workspaces also helps to kind of maximize the speed of modifying your workflow based on what you want. You know, it's maybe not appropriate for everyone, but a lot of people have found it really useful. Now you can see that while opening and closing my asset browser, it's opening an asset library that doesn't exist. That's because I've actually renamed it. So let's fix that. Under the interface and asset browser settings, let me customize my asset browser experience. Yes, I would like to keep the close button there so I can close it if I want. But I'll just reopen it quickly. Don't worry about the advanced settings for the asset browser. I may do a separate video about that on another channel. I'm going to set my default asset library to Afterglow, and you'll notice it updates in real time as well. So there's some nice feedback there. I can also change the default thumbnail size in the add on here. And again, it updates in real time, so you can preview that. And we can change the default sort method as well. There are additionally filters so you can filter out the content. This is the same kind of thing you'll find in the sub settings. But the reason you might want to do it here instead of in the asset browser is so it applies every time you open it. So now if I open the asset browser, it's already where I want the content. So again, just a relatively short video introducing you to the add-on, but also letting previous customers know that there have been some significant changes based on Blender 4.5. That update is now available on Gumroad and Superhive. Again, it's version 1.9.2 for Blender 4.5, please keep in mind that because there have been significant changes, there are quite likely loose bugs that will also depend on your specific setup and the kinds of files you're using, because it's difficult for us to predict every single use case. So if you do bump into a bug, please head on over to curtisol.online slash contact and let me know. Alternatively, we have a Discord server and you can send me, you know, pictures, information there, etc., or whatever social platform you like. But if you do, please let me know what version of the add-on you're using or a version of Blender, and exactly what steps you took to get the error to appear so I can try and reproduce it. So thanks for watching everyone. There's been lots of developments in other add-ons as well recently. I'll keep you updated as we go along. If you made it to the end, please put a tool related emoji in the comments so I can see if you made it this far. Special thank you to the patrons and have a great day.